Hi, and welcome to Kidney Plugged In. Today, we are pleased to welcome back William Big Sleep Stewart, who's no stranger to our regular Plugged In viewers. William, who has diabetes and was later diagnosed with kidney disease, was on dialysis for three years before receiving a kidney transplant in 2017. William joins us today to talk about the changes in his life post kidney transplant and what this newfound freedom has meant to him. Did you know that people of Asian, South Asian, Indigenous and African descent are at greater risk of kidney disease? Make sure to check out our Did You Know segment to find out more. And we've got the scoop on all the superhero action that will be taking place at the 2022 Kidney Gala on March the 5th. So don't go anywhere because all this and more is coming up next right here on Kidney Plugged In. The nurse came in roughly around 12.30 in the morning, 1 o'clock, and woke me up and was like, okay, Mr. Stewart, we're going to unhook you, you know, wake up. You're going to go down to, to surgery to get your kidney. And I, I, I honestly, got to be, I, I looked at her and I thought, like, no, I'm dreaming. This is, yeah, she's. And the funny thing was is then I looked down at those blue, blue socks they gave you, and I'm like, I would never wear anything this ugly, so this is actually a real, for real, I'm getting this kidney. You know, I, I felt joy. I, I knew that I, I was like, wow, okay, you know, I got at least another minimum 20 years, minimum 20 years to be on this planet with my friends, my family, my loved ones. I have lived with diabetes for more than about 20, close to 25 years. And um, having diabetes and not taking care of myself um, was probably one of, the, one of the biggest issues that I had because it, it led me to having kidney disease. When, when, when you have a sickness, it's life-changing. And a sickness like this, it's definitely life-changing. In 2008, my kidneys started to fail which that led to um, me having to be on dialysis. My birthday was on July 5th, and um, a week before that, I had already made plans to go sit down and meet somebody on the 6th because uh, to get my will done. You know, I figured if I made it to my next birthday, I should probably get all my, my, my affairs in order. I was scared. Yes, um, but I, I knew that, you know, feeling scared or beating yourself up, that doesn't help. I mean, getting out, what, what helped me, to be totally honest with you, a lot of the times was getting out and doing those things, um, doing PSAs with Haley Ann and, and Logan and, and getting out in the community and educating myself and, and just seeing the support that I got from people like my friends and family coming out to the kidney walks and people wanting to come out to the gala, that made a lot. That, that definitely helped, you know, for me to, I guess, stay sane. But I mean, there's times at night that I'd be laying in bed and I would cry because I didn't know. I didn't know if I was, if I was gonna be alive or not. So I walked to my car and I had, I believe it was about nine or 10 missed messages. And a lot of them were from my wife, from my wife. Um, there was a ton of text messages. It was uh, calls from St. Paul's Hospital, and you know when I opened the text messages, it said, you know, you need to call St. Paul's Hospital. But that was like the fourth one. <laughs> they they think they have a kidney for you. So all I could think of in here was my wife's voice, and I thought I'm not calling her back right now at all. I'm gonna call St. Paul's, and I'll talk to them first, so I got information <laughs> before I call her back. But the thing was, is I, I almost missed that phone call to the point where they have to call someone else to say, hey, you, you come in because we tried to get a hold of someone and they're not available. And it all started to sink in and I just remember crying, just like crying. And I thought the funny thing was, is I got to a stoplight and I'm trying to wipe my eyes, and I'm crying. And I remember I looked over at this lady in her car and all she saw was this black dude. <laughs> so I don't even know what was probably going through her head. <laughs> but I, I started to kind of laugh at that point. And I, you know, I realized they were tears of joy. Well, when I woke up uh, post-transplant, uh, I guess you could say I, I, the feeling that I had was I guess, you know, joy 
and pain. <laughs> there, was, there was just a little bit of joy and there's a little bit of pain. Um, but I, I guess I, I was ecstatic. I, I, I was like, oh my God, like, this is, if it really happened, I really do have a kidney. I mean, I, I was getting up, walking as much as I could. The difference in between what I wanted to do, what I was able to do was different from, from what I sh should have been doing, but my body wanted to move, I wanted to go. And um, I guess I could say, you know, I felt triumph. I felt like that battle, I had won it. Anyone who's had a kidney transplant felt the exact same way that I did. I mean, the first, I guess the first few weeks was hard in a sense of your healing. Um, you're, you're trying to get a grasp on how now your life is going to change again to being able to be like, yeah, I can go in the pool, I can shoot the basketball around with my, my, my kid. I had, to, I had to get up, I had to walk, and people are telling me like, dude, would you just relax and just, would you just rest? I couldn't do that because I was just like, are you kidding me? Do you know how good I feel? You don't even understand. You don't even understand how I feel right now. If I could just, if I could have a bunch of kidneys and give them to people, <laughs> I could be like, see, that's what I'm talking about. See, I told you. It is one of the most incredible feelings to, to be able to, to get up in the morning and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go on a treadmill. Are you kidding me? There is no way I could have done that for four, five, even six years. You have to take care of you. And I know that now more than ever. That's why I'm on this crusade to work with the, the Kidney Foundation because I want everybody in the world to know it. I want everybody in the world to know about kidney disease. I want everybody in the world to, you know, sign their donor card. And I want everybody in the world to help save lives. And, and, and like the slogan says, heroes aren't born, they're registered. Remember that. Wow. I can't believe I looked that good after five and a half years. Hmm. I'm just playing. No, um, I, uh, yeah, that brings back a, a lot of memories. Just actually thinking back to it from going from a point of uh, not knowing what you're, if you're going to wake up the next morning to a point where you feel great. You don't taste metal anymore. You, everything, <laughs> you know, you, you can actually taste your food. Um, if you have so much more energy, especially now um, where I was working back then, but it was a different type of uh, vibe when you were getting up every morning because I had to do dialysis. I had to be off at a certain time to get home to do dialysis in order to get to work on time the next morning and, uh, you know, find myself doing little things while I'm still <laughs> hooked up to the machine to get out of the door. But, you know, when I look at today, uh, being able to just wake up which is weird, I, I'd be able, I, I had to pause the machine or I had to just even to get up to go to the washroom. This was really weird. Uh, for so those of you who don't understand about dialysis and, and uh, the freedoms that you have after a kidney transplant, and I'm, you know, I'm working, you know, as much as I can. And um, I, I have, I've done a, uh, a number of projects in, in, in film and television. I'm able to write and um, I have so much more energy. I feel amazing. I haven't really had any setbacks, actually. The, uh, the team of doctors have been amazing. I'm still um, in touch with the, you know, the doctors who um, did the transplant, and uh, they have to you know, check in on me and make sure that I, I stay on track. But sometimes, you know, you feel because you feel good, so you, you try to slip a little bit, and then, you know, but, you know, with blood work and everything else like that, I feel, um, I still feel blessed. I feel beyond blessed, to be 100% to be honest with you. And I don't, I just feel like, um, you know, thinking back, and it goes all the way back to the thought process and the understanding that, you know, donors, like if someone did not sign their donor card, I'm not sure if I'd be sitting here today. So I feel blessed and, you know, triumph, like you just saw that, you know, I feel like um, triumph for me right at this point has, has been uh, detrimental to just my, 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 Peace of mind.
I know most of you guys might know me, you know, as a funny guy from what I do at work, but I mean, there's still some maintenance that needs to be done uh, for me to maintain and keep this kidney. And uh, it's, it's, it's important, you know, I'm, I'm on a regular schedule where I have to take my meds uh, twice a day at, um, you know, 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, so these, those are things that are important for you as a transplant recipient to make sure you're taking your anti-rejection drugs. You still gotta watch a lot of the foods that you eat. And, um, you know, obviously still being diabetic, I gotta watch my blood sugars. So you know, we gotta test those a lot. And you just try to stay um, on top of it as much as you can. And like I said, I'm only human. So there's times where you see something, and, you know, you're just like, oh, that red velvet cake. Ugh. I mean, I could have half, but uh, you know, you still eat the whole thing, but you know, you just gotta be real, <laughs> you gotta be real diligent in making sure that you do watch the choices that you make and really just uh, keep on top of, uh, you know, your, your monthly blood work, uh, making sure that you're always kind of keeping up with your doctor's appointments and um, just trying to stay healthy. It's kind of weird how I, I always think to myself, whoever, gave me this kidney, I must be feeling some of his cravings because I've never used to crave certain things like vegetables and <laughs> things like that. So it's like, you know, it's, you know, people think that sometimes, you know, um, you know, and it could just be something that's in my head because, you know, because I'm thinking I have to make wiser choices, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I kind of feel like, um, you know, you, you have to look at like life and go, wow, I, I have another person's organ in me that's keeping me alive. So I kind of feel like, you know, sometimes, I, you know, I wish he would crave more like pizza and stuff like that, but you know, it's mostly vegetables, but, <laughs> but it's all good. I, I think it's a, it's a great choice. <laughs> and it was, a, it was the perfect person for me because it's definitely life changing. You know, life is all about choices. So when you look at the choices that someone made, like the person who decided to make the choice to sign a donor card, and everyone else who's out there who's made the choice to sign a donor card, it, it allows people like myself, other transplant recipients, to actually be here today and talk to you, be with friends, be with family, um, be with our loved ones, and you know, still be able to um, look forward to living out our dreams and um, our passions. It's 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 a great thing, um, and I and I just kind of wish that I could um, just say thank you and you know send my gratitude and even just to the person's family i mean i don't know if you it, you know we don't know who it is they don't tell you who, who the person is that got that gave you the, the the organ or you know their family members but i i, I just want to say thank you and i'm sure there's so many of us out there that would just love to say thank you to the people who who've made, made the choice or you know you go into the dmv or you know just to you know, take that box just know that you're doing you're doing something very positive and y'all trying to make me cry I don't like this stuff you're doing something great <laughs> you're doing something amazing hi I'm Michelle for did you know did you know one in ten Canadians has kidney disease that equates to about four million people in this country in addition to that are the millions more who are at risk in fact $40 billion are spent annually on treating this disease, and over the last 20 years, the number of Canadians treated for kidney failure has doubled. Did you know, kidney disease has no cure, and the treatment for kidney failure is either dialysis or a kidney transplant? However, the demand for organs far outweighs the supply, and thousands of Canadians are on the transplant wait list. 80% of those are waiting for a kidney. Hey, honey, I lost the list for Jason's birthday thing. Did you know you can lose 80% of your kidney function without noticing? Early diagnosis is critical, and in fact, your life may depend on it. The good news is that when diagnosed early, the kidney patient can often make diet and lifestyle changes to help maintain their kidney function and possibly avoid the life-threatening diagnosis of end-stage kidney failure. So it's critical for you to know if you may be at risk. Risk factors for kidney disease include type 1 or type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, a family history of kidney disease, 
or if you are of Asian, South Asian, African, or Indigenous descent. If you meet one of these categories, please contact your doctor and request the EGFR test. And now you know. One of the things I, I feel um, was crazy to a point where, you know, you start living life, do whatever you want. You're like, hell yeah, I can come to LA. I'm going here, I'm doing this. And then, uh, you know, everybody has to hit the brakes because COVID-19 comes around. He decides that they want, he wants to hang out. And then every other, you know, variant that's a part of the Decepticons or whatever, Omicron, and all those other people who want to <laughs> come, in, all those other viruses who want to come into play. Which, but you know, and I know I'm, I'm joking about it. And um, the, the serious part about it of this is, is like you, you look at it as a kidney transplant patient, and there's a lot of people who lost their lives. And then you know, you look at it from <laughs> the aspect of being a kidney transplant recipient, being, being aware of. Um, your immunity, being aware of getting sick, getting a cold, having the flu, um, a lot of the things that um, that were happening to your body when you're dealing with uh, kidney disease. And as a kidney transplant uh, recipient, a number of us, we already were using hand sanitizer. We had to be very diligent with making sure that things were clean and sterile around us. And, um, you know, getting sick is not good because, you know, dealing with a, a very <laughs> touchy subject when it comes to a transplant. You know, you have to really be diligent and really think of your health. So um, I think for for me, I knew as, as a transplant recipient, people were like, oh, now we have to use hand sanitizer. I was like, I've been using hand sanitizer for the last five, 10 years. You know, I got scared. Everybody's running around looking for toilet paper. I went out and got the hand sanitizer. I was on it. I was the first thing I went and got. <laughs> so I just stocked up on all that. So I'm still good, you know? But um, I think that, you know, you, there's there's a lot of things that, you know, you can take the good and the bad from what's happening. But I, I feel that, you know, a lot of the, the changes um, that you have to go through when a variant like this comes about, like COVID-19, is like, you know, we're getting calls from the doctors. We're, we're talking to, you know, um, nephrologist, you know, the Kidney Foundation is putting out a lot of information about, you know, hey, you got to be very careful out there. It's it's something that anyone with any transplant or anything like that, I mean, especially for me, for the kidney transplant, it puts us in a very serious uh, box where, you know, if we get sick, um, you know, all that hard work we've done to fight to stay alive can, you know, it could definitely turn tragic. So. Um, it's very um, important for us to stay diligent and uh, obviously keep your hands clean and try not to, um, you know, wear your masks and so on and so forth. But we were already wearing masks. We were wearing masks after the transplant, so it's kind of weird how we were set up. <laughs> we were already set up and being, you know, trained <laughs> for what's happening right now. So I feel like, you know, with everything that's going on, you think of people's mental health, you think of the stress that people are going through, everything right now where, you know, um, this, this is such a huge change for a lot of people. I, 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 in, a, in a weird way, I kind of feel like the things you have to do as a transplant recipient um, kind of kind of sets you up to kind of not make it seem like it's a big deal. You know, I'm more like, you know, okay, so what we gotta do? Wear a mask. And no problem. I still got boxes of those left. Um, <laughs> you know, hand sanitizer. I got the good stuff from the hospital. I'm good. <laughs> so it did, for me, it was it was it was fine. And um, like I said, being diligent and going to set and um, having that support, um, I, I didn't really feel like it was heavy, but I was scared because, you know, it's all new information. But I feel like, the, you know, you look at the information I got from, like I said, from doctors and the Kidney Foundation and all the information that's consistently coming out. We're Kidney plugged in and we've got you covered for COVID. Kidney patients are one of the vulnerable populations at high risk for developing severe disease from COVID-19. I'm, I'm okay. I, I think I'm good. I think that, you know, we all just got to take care of our mental health and understand that we'll get through this. And one of the biggest for me was it's like, hey, I, I survived kidney disease. So, and I got a transplant. So what's next? Oh, I'm here. I'm ready. It's not a big deal for me. I'll fight this fight. 
Join us March 5th, 2022 to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Kidney Gala. The 10th anniversary celebration will gather communities across BC and nationwide virtually to raise funds and awareness of kidney disease, risk factors, and organ donation. The theme for the 2022 Kidney Gala is superheroes in honor of our heroic kidney patients and their superhero team of support, including loved ones, caregivers, kidney donors, researchers, healthcare workers, allied healthcare professionals, and well, the list goes on and on. During the evening, guests will experience a unique, innovative, and as always, inspiring program broadcast live and directly to the comfort of their own home foundations critical programs and services and gives them hope for a brighter future through world-class research and here's a sneak peek at the three keynote speakers for the evening sometimes you kind of feel paralyzed like you could move but you can't. 13 year old Ava will share her journey as a child living with kidney disease and talk about what it was like being on dialysis until she was finally able to get a kidney transplant last year. So, my name is Allie Adams. I'm 34 years old. And my fun fact is, I have three kidneys and two pancreas. And very proud of that fun fact, and I'm sure we'll talk more about it. Allie, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes as a toddler, will talk about her shocking diagnosis of the end-stage kidney disease at the age of 30 and her subsequent dual kidney and pancreas transplant. You know, I really had no idea that it was even possible at 32 to be diagnosed with end-stage kidney failure. And Larry will share the impact of the recent flooding in the Fraser Valley on dialysis patients like himself and the Fraser Valley health staff and community that rose in support to ensure that he received his life-saving treatment along with many other dialysis patients just like him that were left stranded by the flooding. So don't miss what will truly be a memorable evening. All virtual passes come with a full tax receipt, entry into a door prize contest, and a special edition Kidney Gala superhero themed mask that would be mailed to your door in time for the event. So why not treat yourself, a kidney patient or a healthcare worker, to an entertaining night at the Kidney Gala? And check out the variety of gala packages that are catered by ML's Catering, Upper Bench Winery, and Vancouver Island Brewing. And these come along with the deluxe gift bags which are available to our lower mainland guests. The Kidney Gala commences at 6.30 p.m. and it will bring guests together via virtual live stream and an online auction access from BC and nationwide. Superhero graphics will be incorporated throughout the evening to further enhance the entertainment factor of the superhero concept. And we encourage our Kidney Gala guests to submit their superhero selfies throughout the evening. They can be wearing their superhero outfits or our special edition superhero kidney gala masks that will be mailed to them before the event. Use the hashtag you see on the screen to be entered into our social media contest. The 10th anniversary kidney gala celebrating our kidney superheroes is sure to be an evening to remember. So please join us. Visit kidneygala.com for more information and to get your tickets today. See you there. One of the best things I think that's uh, happened to me about being a kidney transplant recipient and being somebody who had kidney disease, it actually brought me to a point where awareness of kidney disease, um, which made me a real advocate of making sure that you know people understand kidney, uh, uh, just organ donation. And um, I've, I've, I've done everything that I possibly can, and I, I'll do anything that the, the Kidney Foundation actually calls and asks me for. And it's funny because they'll still be like, hi, we were wondering. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Let me do it. <laughs> as long as I'm available, yeah, I got no problem. I'll do it. It's, it's okay. Everything happens for a reason. And I, I feel like 
being someone who came, came down with kidney disease. And it, it did run in my family. My mom um, had a, a kidney transplant. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where now for me, um, I feel I'll do whatever they ask. And I'm, I'm an advocate. You just landed on the kidney hub of info. No, 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 don't leave now. Stop, 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 stop right there. We'll make it worth your well, I promise. I'm gonna do whatever I can. And then I got, you know, friends that'll come along for the ride, you know, um, for the kidney walk. Um, no questions, people come along. James Sabalski, I gotta say it's up to James Sabalski. He, he always says yes every time I ask him to be a part of anything with the Kidney Foundation. And, um, you know, I've had, you know, actors, Adrian Holmes, who's on the new Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We are backstage at the Kidney Gala. This is Soundcheck, and guess who I found and I bumped into? The Honorable Don Strolion, the staple in the maple, the godfather of Canadian hip hop. He goes by the name of Maestro Fresh West. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, William. Uh, and you know, and anybody else who I'm not mentioning because I don't want to do a, a big name drop thing here, but th those are the people who you really, um, they, you know, they've been affected by some sort of um, tragedy in their lives or someone they know has been affected by either kidney disease or another um, ailment. And, um, but you, you, it's funny how people will go above and beyond, not just for you as just because you're, they're your friend, it's because when they see everything else, the support that you're getting from everyone else around you. And I think, you know, the Kidney Foundation for me has really just opened my eyes that I'm, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep fighting with them that, to make sure everybody knows what's going on. But I just wanna say this, everyone at the Kidney Foundation has been great. Um, everyone, um, the love that they show, their dedication to making sure that the awareness is there, the information is there. And the things that I'm talking about, there's 900 other things that the Kidney Foundation does that no one talks about. It's just kind of a, a, a train that kind of keeps going and how many families they help. Just when people are coming into town as far as to get a transplant and they do so much. I think, you know, at least my mom can look down and at least say that this is something that she could be proud of. And uh, we both are going through it. We both went through it. So, you know, um, I just feel that the Kidney Foundation, you know, it really does change and save lives. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the team.